Okay, I want to make a simple and um, relatively quick video on discharging your combo amp. Um, in this case, this is a, a Tweed, one of the NOS Blues Juniors. Um, the only thing different about the NOS Blues Junior, by the way, is the Tweed covering. And they put uh, kind of like a vintage replica Jensen speaker in it, uh, which I took out and replaced with a greenback. But that is absolutely the only difference with the um, the NOS edition of the Blues Junior, the electronics and the actual Blues Junior uh, components here are absolutely identical. Just a way for Fender to put some tweed on it and charge more money. So, uh, But the Blues Junior is an amazing amp, especially after you do some basic mods. Uh, this amp here has been modded a little bit. I've replaced um, one of the main caps here some of the capacitors on the tone controls. I've added a bias, um, a bias adjustment pod here, and this amp really sounds amazing. You can find some great mod kits for these at BillMAudio.com. And uh, he has, I just saw today actually, he has, uh, I didn't even know he had videos on there, but he has a video on how to disassemble the Blues Junior, and um, he shows you discharging the capacitors also. So um, I hadn't seen those videos, so I started making this one uh, to put on my YouTube channel to help people out who do their own amp maintenance like I do. So this is gonna be relatively short and sweet and make you feel hopefully very comfortable with doing your own maintenance and uh, basically not dying when you touch your tube amp. There's a lot of information online and you're going to hear a lot of opinions and it can get confusing at times as to who's right and what's actually safe and what isn't and am i going to get really hurt when i try to um work on my amp and you know connect this thing to pin one and do this to pin three and let it wait for 10 seconds and wear rubber shoes and to, you know let's keep this short and simple and give you some good information um and some good safety procedures to follow every time you work with your amp and uh, you're going to be just fine. So some basic tools that you're going to want to have to uh, discharge your capacitors and to do amp work in general. You need a good multimeter and you can even use a, uh, a cheap multimeter like this one here from Harbor Freight for about 10 bucks. Uh, all you need is that it can read DC volts. This is an auto ranging meter, meaning I don't have to set it to DC volts. You just set it to volts and it'll automatically determine whether it's AC, DC, millivolts or volts. So either one of those is just fine. Okay, so what are they actually talking about uh, with tube amps when they say that um, it stores lethal voltage and it can hurt you or kill you? You're going to see this about a million point five times online. What they're saying is, is that these big cans here, these are called the filter capacitors. These can store up to 500 DC volts of electricity. 500 volts is enough to ruin your week, okay? Can it kill you? Sure, it can probably kill you, especially if you use two hands, grab uh, onto one of these capacitors, or use a metal object and create an arc through your body, meaning going from the capacitor, through your arm, through your chest and heart, out the other side. When you create a current, like an arc like that, I'm sure it can stop your heart and you can get hurt. Regardless, we don't wanna find out what it does to you, obviously. I'm sure if you search long enough on the internet, there's gonna be some documentation of people being hurt. Uh, I have seen someone shocked by an amp before and it's not pretty. Um, it definitely stores a lot of voltage and the bottom line is I've been working on my amps for about five years now and I have never been shocked once knock on wood because I follow the same safety procedures uh, all the time so but these are called filter caps and this is what is dangerous okay now first things first under no circumstances ever do you ever stick your hand your finger or a metal tool anywhere inside of an amplifier before you know that the caps are discharged. Bottom line, there it is. I don't care if someone tells you that the amp discharges by itself or if the amp's been sitting off for 10 years, who cares? 
always check with a multimeter to make sure that those caps are drained. Um, the Blues Junior, by the way, automatically discharges the filter caps if you've allowed the amp time to warm up to where you can play it and then turn it off. It will automatically discharge those filter caps down to a safe level for you to be able to stick your hand in there. Do I trust that? Absolutely not. And I can hook this multimeter to these caps and prove to you that it'll discharge the caps. And I still check it with a multimeter knowing that. Why not be safe? And that's probably why I've never been shocked. So the great thing is, is that after a couple quick safety procedures, you don't have to have that terrifying fear anymore about changing your tubes, doing a basic mod on your amp. If you're decent with soldering and you have good attention to detail, this stuff can actually be a lot of fun and it can save you hundreds and hundreds of dollars uh, in doing basic amp maintenance and you don't have to wait around for a month for it to get back from the shop. A lot of stuff you can just do yourself with a soldering uh, iron, a little bit of attention to detail um, and following the procedure as to how to drain the cap. So, okay, so a multimeter, either a cheap one or a good one, Insulated leads, obviously, that come with multimeters, they have to be insulated. And what that basically means is it has this shielding on it, this rubber shielding. If you have a, a blank, like a unshielded metal clamp, don't use it, okay? You know, it's going to conduct right into your fingers. The other thing it's handy to have is this is a regular wooden chopstick. This is really great for if you need to probe around inside the amp to check for loose connections. It will not conduct electricity. Under no circumstances do you ever stick a screwdriver inside of an amp um, until you know it's completely drained. I still use electrician screwdrivers that are rated for high voltage even when the amp is off and uh, I know the caps are drained. I use these uh, screwdrivers here which are safety electrician screwdrivers and they can actually keep you from being shocked in a lot of cases it's just not a good idea to stick metal things inside of something that has current that's just common sense 101 okay so what happens is you're also going to hear that these capacitors um, can store electricity long after the amp has been turned off and on a lot of amps that is the case in most cases, if an amp has been turned off and, and unplayed and unplugged for weeks and weeks, it probably will slowly drain the caps. But again, don't take that chance. Always check them with the multimeter and make sure you discharge them uh, safely. Again, the Blues Junior will discharge the caps by itself if it's stock. If you've done something to it or you've modded it in a certain way that changes that, I'm just kind of covering my bases here. Um, or something's not functioning uh, uh, correctly, then maybe it won't char uh, discharge the caps. But both in this video and on Bill M's website, he will show you that it'll discharge it. Now, if you turn the amp on and then turn it right back off without allowing the tubes to heat up and get warm enough to play, it will hold a, a, a very high charge still. If you allow them to completely warm up, and you can actually plug your guitar in and hear your guitar and play it, and then you shut the amp down, it'll discharge. And I'm gonna show you that in a minute. Okay, so here's the thing. To be able to work on these amps, you have to discharge these capacitors to ground. For you new guys who've never done anything like this before, when somebody says, put your black lead to ground, or you wanna ground it to the chassis, or, um, um, you know, uh, put your negative to chassis. What they're referring to is this metal casing. This is the ground, this is the chassis and or the ground. Also, you have some ground screws in here like this one back here. And you have one on this side over here. And this is what Fender uses themselves. You can see they have the transformer grounded right to, um, right to the chassis here. This shiny part here It'll still work as a ground, but I wouldn't use that. I would use the matte part, the actual steel here. So this is the ground when they say ground the chassis. These are the filter caps here, just so you know actually what's going on. Some people that are looking to get information and do this, they have no idea even what chassis means. So I just wanna make sure that this is as clear as possible. 
Okay, there's, there's a couple different ways to discharge these. Number one, super, super handy tool that you can use for any tube amp to discharge it is called a discharge uh, stick, okay? And basically what this is, is an insulated lead. There's a metal clip on the end of this, okay? And on this side, you have a wooden rod, a metal tip, and inside of here are two bleeder resistors that's going to slow down the transfer of that DC voltage when it drains. One big problem is, especially like on an amp like a Marshall head or something like that, is that if you just take a, you know, an alligator clip and you clip it to the ground and you take the other end and touch that big capacitor with it and there's no bleeder resistor in the middle, that voltage is going to try to go to that ground so fast that you're probably going to see a big spark, like a big flash, and it can be quite dangerous. As a matter of fact, some old school guys, uh, I know Stevie Ray Vaughan's um, guitar and amp tech, there's actually a video of him taking a screwdriver, touching the positive side of a capacitor while leaning the screwdriver down to touch the chassis. You know, he's Stevie Ray Vaughan's amp tech, so he probably knows a hell of a lot more than I do, but this cannot be a good idea. I've actually seen a video where a guy welds a screwdriver straight to the chassis by doing that because all that voltage, there's, there's no way to step it down safely without a bleeder resistor. You can also make your own. If you Google um, homemade tube amp discharging tool, uh, you'll see plenty of examples of how people make these. And all it really is, is an alligator clip and then attach to a resistor. And if you need the exact um, uh, rating resistor, you can get a lot of opinions online, but you'll see that a lot of people talk about a few common ratings um, to use as a bleeder resistor. And then another lead, you're gonna have another lead alligator clip, and that'll go to either ground or your positive. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take one end of your alligator clip clip it to the ground and then it's going to go into your resistor and then the other end will go to one of the positive sides of the capacitors and it will safely drain the current right out of these amps okay if you're going to hook a multimeter up to check um, to see if your capacitors are drained the way you want to do it is you want to set your meter to DC volts if you have an auto ranging meter just turn it to volts and it'll automatically detect DC. If you have a real simple meter like this one here, set it to DC volts at a thousand, the highest amount of DC volts that your meter can read. Okay. Turn it on and you want to get in the habit. Some people will tell you it doesn't matter and maybe it doesn't in some cases. But in my opinion, you always want to put the ground on first. So what we're going to do is we're going to ground to the chassis. I'm going to grab this ground wire back here. And then we're going to take the other end and we're gonna to touch it and hook it to one of the positive, um, the positive end of one of the filter caps. Now you also might ask uh, too, how do I know what side of the filter capacitors, um, what side is positive? If you look at these particular um, capacitors that are used in combo amps, you're gonna notice that one side here has like a, a groove in it. That's your positive side. Another way to tell on these particular silver and black ones, if you look at the end of it, it's a matte black. The other end, the negative side, is silver, is a bright, like a shiny silver. Also, one more way on any capacitor to tell the negative side is that there's usually arrows on the side that show, the, and the arrows always point towards the negative. Always, always point towards the negative. So we're gonna take our positive lead, the ground is already hooked up, 
and we're going to clip this positive lead. To the positive side of one of our capacitors here, the filter caps. This amp has been turned off overnight and you can still see that there's 16 volts of electricity in there. Now it's slowly coming down because the meter itself is running to ground so it's slowly discharging it. But you can see a lot of people would say, well, if it's drained, if this amp drains by itself, then how come there's voltage still in there? Well, first of all, the amp discharges itself down to a safe, less than harmful level, and there's a little bit of residual voltage still in there. If you go to Bill M. Audio's website, um, which is uh, BillMAudio.com, he explains to you exactly what that re residual voltage is. But 16, or here, 15 and a half volts, that is not enough to hurt you. I mean, that's just a little bit above a 12 volt battery. Now, I like to drain it all the way down to zero just because. I don't know, I just do, and it's a habit I got into. But I'm going to turn this amp on to show you that it will discharge itself if you let the tubes warm up. So right now, with this on and in place, we're going to fire this amp up. And at this point, you do not touch inside of this amp anymore. So right away, you can see that thing flying up in voltage that already is enough to hurt you right there. That's a lot of voltage. That will zap you pretty good. So we're gonna let this warm up. Now if I turned it right back off, it'll probably hold that. It Well, it definitely will hold that uh, charge in there. But we're gonna let this get warm enough to play. Okay, and now if I plug my guitar in right now, I'd be able to play it. The tubes are hot and ready to go. And now we're going to flip it off and I want you to see the current drain. So you can see this amp automatically drains the current. We're all the way down to 13 volts, 12 volts, 11 volts, 10. You could touch that right now and it would be totally safe. Okay, let's say your amp doesn't automatically discharge and or you want to um, take this down to nothing. What you're gonna wanna do then is take your discharge tool or your clips that I was explaining. You're gonna always Always unplug the amp from the wall and leave it off, turned off. So I'm going to reach over and we're going to unplug this amp. We're going to take and I'm going to attach my discharge tool or, you know, your homemade one. We're going to put the ground first. We're going to ground it over here to the chassis. And now I'm going to go into a shot of the multimeter because I want you to watch how fast this will take the charge out safely. I'm going to touch the other end of this discharge uh, stick to one of the positive leads of the capacitors. And it doesn't matter which one as long as it's one of the filter caps. So when I bring this up and touch it, I want you to watch that current drain. And you can see now it's dropping. And this is how you safely discharge your amp. So had this not discharged to a safe level by itself, it would be doing the same thing. It would just be starting at wherever it was, 280 volts, 300 volts. You have to be extremely careful when you're doing these sort of things. You always clip your ground on first. You always make sure your leads are insulated and you never touch that capacitor with your bare hands. Never, ever touch that capacitor with your bare hands until you know there's no charge in there. So I'm just gonna touch one of the other ones. And it is handy to leave your multimeter hooked up like this so that you can read the current and check it and make sure it's safe. 
So we're down now to only five volts. I mean, this is less than a nine volt battery. And now another thing is, you're gonna also hear people say that the, um, once you discharge the amp, that the amp can creep back up itself. Like it can start charging itself back up. Well, first things first, it's not gonna charge itself to a lethal level. Not if it's not plugged in. There's no way for it to regain that much charge. But it can increase, you know, a few volts, sometimes as much as maybe five to eight volts I've seen. On this particular amp here, it'll go up to around five to six volts at times. It's not enough to hurt you. And again, uh, some people will tell you that if you leave your clip to ground and the other end on the capacitor, kind of like your multimeter is now, that it makes sure that it doesn't creep back up. So you could do that too. You can see now we're all the way down to almost two volts. And so on and so forth. We would just take this you know, down as far as you feel comfortable. And again, I mean, we're only dealing with a little over a single volt of electricity right now. And that's how easy it is.